From the campus of Stanford University and in union with the Office for Religious and Spiritual Life at Stanford, this is the Why God Matters radio show and podcast, featuring one-on-one interviews with religious clergy of all faiths, philosophers, and spiritual practitioners committed to mindfulness, gratitude, and a joy-filled existence of a life lived in God's presence and light. Our radio show and podcast questions and reflects on the mystery of God and our understanding or even sometimes doubt. Our show illustrates and provides real-life experiences of the vision of faith, engagement, and practice. And at last, the conversation of the heart that enables us to live in communion with the ultimate intelligence and divine love that reason or logic cannot penetrate, nor words express. Hosted by Tom Dioro and in union with the Office for Religious and Spiritual Life at Stanford University. Thank you. Uh, for our guest today, let's welcome Xavier Icarin Coder son of American minister and prosperity preacher Frederick J. Icarin Coder II, better known as Reverend Ike. Xavier is a spiritual explorer, communicator, focused on healing mind and soul. He does this through creating and sharing original music, inspirational spoken word, and meditative approaches. I love this. His motto, music plus mass message plus meditation equals epic inspiration is distilled from decades of work within the field of personal transformation on his own behalf and on the behalf of scores of people he's worked with. Xavier has also led involvement in transformational initiatives and movements to established establishing organizations in New York city and Los Angeles. For more information, feel free to visit website, Xavier soulstreams.com. Again, that's Xavier soulstreams.com. Hello, Xavier. Thank you so much for being here. Really super, super honored and really, really excited to have you on the show today. Thank you. Yes, yes. Thank you, Tom. Um, it's great to be with you and uh, it's the delight. I appreciate the, uh, the uh, invitation. Yeah. Well, we, you and I have talked back and forth for a couple, a couple months now. I've enjoyed every uh, transaction. Every time I see your name come up on uh, on my phone, I'm like, all right, Xavier, what's what's new and what's next? <laughs> so we're finally obviously on, on uh, Why God Matters show. Xavier, we want to start the show with uh, something humorous. Um, we've had some prior to even you being on the show, we can talk about that. Or if anything that comes to mind that was at least initially seemed either daunting or, oh, just this angst and turned out to be uh, extraordinary. Hmm. Well, we certainly had, uh, had some Keystone Cops moments uh, <laughs> trying to get on your program here. <laughs> the technology, uh, and, you know, a lot of it's new to me. I mean, Zoom is, is pretty much the only thing, you know, in terms of the, this kind of format that I'm familiar with. And I realize I have all these, okay, there's a browser issue, there's a spam issue, there's this, that, and the other. And I finally got on and we're talking and somebody calls my phone and I lose audio and I can't get in. So trying to get back in through my computer, yada, 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 back on Zoom. So I'm not sure what the cosmic joke is or, or what, but you know, maybe sometimes we need to kind of fall back on our familiar platforms or something. I, I, I don't know. It's very strange. Yeah. Very, uh, very interesting insight. And going into that, that um, the technology, you know, we're now obviously not seeing each other one-on-one -on -one and that human connection is, um, I don't know if it's unlike anything in the history of, of mankind, but it definitely would, it is right there. How are you personally and even professionally navigating through that unprecedented change well you know personally i'm a bit of a hermit so the the impact there on me has been rather limited you know uh i love to be home and to explore and just you know be in the in the the creative place as an artist you know um, at home or in the studio where i work but then also you know to spend time in the solitude and in, in the mystical places that i love to inhabit. So personally, it's not been a big issue, you know, in terms of navigating the outside world, you know, going to Whole Foods to get groceries, you know, an hour with a mask on, of course, it's, it's tough for all of us. And my heart goes out for anybody who has to work in an office setting and wear a mask all day. That's got to be really, really difficult. But it's interesting, you know, this media, you know, this kind of teleconference webinar, you know, Zoom meeting thing has been quite a blessing. It's actually allowed me to reach out in ways that I probably would not have, you know, 
being invited to conferences to speak, for example, where I probably would not have traveled. Um, now I can just beam in and it's really fun. And so it's, it's, it's added to some things that we're developing in the in forthcoming platform. And I'm really excited about it around that model that you mentioned, you know, music message and meditation. So this is actually, you know, uh, minus the, the technical frustrations, it's quite fun. <laughs> <laughs> how, how did you arrive at that? The music, the message that, how did you arrive there? It's what I do. I'm a musician at heart, you know, since childhood, I've been, playing music and uh, you know drumming in particular is a language of my soul the rhythm and i have to express myself that way it's is my salvation and it's my artistic expression and uh, you know later in my adolescence i started uh, studying and writing music as well and um it's such a healing medium you know music and then the message you know i've been speaking uh, metaphysically for, I don't know, going on 40, 40 years now, uh, starting at the church my dad founded, doing sermons and speeches and what have you. And that's another part of my, just my particular ability communicating around metaphysics and spirituality and something I love. And that really turns me on because my head's always in there and, and it's fun to express something in depth that comes from my soul. So, you know, that's the message aspect, inspirational communication. That's really what my ministry has been about. Music message and meditation. Meditation, I would say, is my major tool of personal growth and transformation, you know, uh, both dealing with difficult issues and changing them into something positive and, uh, and also of receiving vision beyond those things uh, that can tap me into something grander than, than um, I have any idea of. So, and I've taught meditation, you know, uh, it's my usual way of presenting is to give an inspirational talk and then to have an experiential meditation around it. So I'm not just spouting words and leaving people hopefully feeling inspired, <laughs> but to give an embodied experience, you know, like to go into an altered state together to, to ground these kind of highfalutin or metaphysical ideas that we we talk about that the, the metaphysical facet uh, do you believe that there is such thing as uh, obviously i'm sure and i do but i would love to hear your thoughts on it that there's such thing as a spiritually endowed what i mean by that is you come from a, a father reverend ike and i believe his father was also a uh, a preacher yes as well. is that correct okay do you think there's a sp- not just a, a, obviously a physical, but a spiritual lineage that just it, it may continue forever, that, that, that you just have a, a calling for that and a, and a skill and an aptitude. Well, absolutely. Well, I look at it from this standpoint. You know, every soul has a unique calling that rolls out in a set of unique gifts, abilities, talents, and strengths. Every soul that incarnates into this physical plane has that. And as a soul, I think we make certain choices. We set this lifetime up in such a way that will be conducive for us to unpack our bounty, so to speak. And so it makes sense. I would come into, you know, I'd be the son of a son of a, of a minister. And, you know, where inspirational communication is, is my life's work. But that goes for everyone. If you look at every individual, there is a connection to something deep within you in terms of your ability. You can call it, it, it may not be directly in your lineage per se as a, you know, a career choice, but there will be some propensity or maybe even some challenge that you face in your lineage that requires you to bring some talents, gifts, abilities online to transcend it, that then you end up you know, finding, wow, you know, this is, this is the stream uh, that my soul flows in and I have to stay close to it. How about this? You, you, you talked earlier about the, the blessings. It's appearances initially may appear like, wow, this, this may seem like a, a curse for lack of a better word, mm. but it's actually a, a blessing. And then that internal climbing, I don't know if that makes sense. Internal climbing, because you think you actually go down, but it, it, there may be more within us than 
actually outside of us. I know we have the universe, Mars, that's just a point of reference and it actually goes further, but the internal spiritual landscape may be even larger. What's your thought on that? Well, yeah, that's a big one, you know. And that, you know, that kind of takes me to the question at hand, the, the title of the show, Why is God Important? And I think it's ultimately because we are God. We are indwelt by God. We are suffused by God. God is within us, around us, throughout us. We're sourced by God. God is the fabric of our being, that which created us and that which we are created out of. We would not and could not exist except for God. Now, God, by whatever term you want to call it, you know, I also often say universal uh, source and cosmic force, and I delineate feminine and uh, masculine essences that I believe are part of the, the balance of this divinity. But we exist in a matrix of God, of spirit. And in a way to ask, <laughs> why is God important? Why does God matter? Is kind of like asking, well, why is water important to a fish? You know? It's spirit is the medium we swim in and that we exist in. And so, unfortunately, we do get, in this society, in, in this world today, we're kind of like fish swimming in the medium that we don't even see. We have become unconscious of it, unfortunately. But you can never be separated from it. And so the key is to, you know, bring our awareness uh, back to us, it. And yes, it's much larger than we are individually, but we're part of it. Excellent. That you, you talked about we're sourced by God. Yes. Even deep, deep diver than you already have. I mean, we've gone to depths. I don't even think the meter will, re will read. <laughs> but go even further in that. We are sourced by God. Well, where else could we have come from? You know, if you, if you take on the idea that there is a creator of all that is, what else could they have created us from except themselves? Because they are all that is. There's no other for us to come from. There's no other place. There's no other material for us to be built from except from divine energy. That is our source. And I do like the word source, you know, as, a, as a, an alternative uh, word for God. You know, for example, if you read the Bible, as I do, you know, from time to time and, and, um, speak from it from time to time when, you know, Jesus says, I and my father are one. I read that as I and my source are one. And that bypasses a whole lot of stuff. I don't, you know, I don't personally believe in the old traditional Christian idea of God and everything that comes with it. There's a much deeper uh, subtext and context and wider context to everything that Jesus and the masters talk about. So, we are one with our source. We, and you've heard this analogy, we, you know, going back to water, we are like individual drops in a vast and infinite ocean. And we contain holographically everything that the wholeness, the grander wholeness has within it. That's the beauty of the human being. That's the beauty of all creation. You know, like a hologram, if you, you take a little piece of it, you can see the entirety of infinity within it. Is outstanding. You're listening to Why God Matters radio show and podcast on KZSU Stanford 90.1 FM. We're talking today with Xavier Ikerin Coder. For more information, please visit XavierSoulStreams.com. That's XavierSoulStreams.com. Xavier, on the topic of divinity, how does what's divinity to you and what your experience and your expression of divinity? Mm, mm, yes. Yes. I mean, divinity as an ultimate source, you know, I think of God, goddess, some say father, mother, God, I say even more extensively, the ultimate universal 
feminine source of all that is, that is companion with the universal masculine force. Now, when I say feminine and masculine, I don't mean male and female. Male and female delineates gender. We're talking, this is beyond gender. And understand that any and all language, I think, that we use to try and conceive of divinity is going to fall short because it is ineffable. You know, language cannot describe it. So we use these inadequate vessels to try to hold and contain the meaning. We have to do that because, you know, we're human. We have the limited rational mind. But the masculine and feminine delineate not not gender, but energy. So to me, divinity, the divine is an ultimate energy. Some of it, or, or the origin of it is the feminine. And if you look at the analog in the created world, everything comes from that feminine. And I believe in this fact, in this instance, it is as below, so above, you know, or the below is reflected in the above. So feminine is the ultimate source. Some call her, you know, the goddess. But just like God, the word goddess is problematical because it's got all of these connotations to it. Goddess to a lot of people sounds kind of, you know, Nandy Pamby, you know, airy, whatever, you know. And to a lot of people, the word God is just too, oh, oof, it's too harsh, you know, because of all of the, you know, you've been abused in some form by somebody, you know saying something about God, but the divine source, the feminine source, the divine feminine and the sacred masculine force. It's been said, uh, my, one of my greatest friends and, and teachers said that goddess created God so that together they could create all that is. That is the, an energetic expression of what that means to have the feminine womb of creation you know, give birth to this other force so that together they could expand into even more, right? The Big Bang, boom. You know, Genesis says, what, in the beginning, what was there? Darkness. That's the feminine, the dark, the fecund, the fertile space. You have to have that fertile space for anything to exist. I mean, you know, look at the soil, um, you know, um, Non-toxic neighborhoods, the uh, the nonprofit that um you, you you'll be mentioning that I support comes from Farmers Footprint, and they're all about the soil, that feminine dark space from which everything nurturing grows. And then you have the masculine force of the sun that works on that, and together, you know, it's it's just a made amazing growth. So the masculine and the feminine divine source and force come together creates all that is that's what to, to me divinity is and as a human it's reflected in me we each have masculine and feminine qualities again it's not about gender every man every woman every non-binary whatever you call yourself we have masculine and feminine energy the feminine is my creative space it's my ability to feel to imagine to intuit and then the masculine is the active part of that the doing you know the uh, the the productivity, the production that comes out of the creative. But if you notice, you have to have the feminine first and the masculine has to proceed from the feminine and be guided by it. Otherwise, it will be destructive. And we see that in the world in spades. Energy. We'll talk about the, the energy. There's a, a, a premium or perceptive value, high value on it's a, it's about time. Time is uh, is is limited, so called. And uh, my belief is, and I'm open to change with it, is actually it's energy that's the real value. What's your thought mm. on that? Mm. Yeah, I agree that uh, with that. You know, I think that time is a convention that we use for the convenience of of existing within this illusion. Because from my perspective, all the physicality is an illusion. It's very real illusion when you're inside it like we are, but it's not all there is. There is larger energy. And so that grander energy does express inside of this smaller, you know, space of creation of the physical plane. 
And when we're aware of that, it expands us out of the, the limited paradigm. So as much as we can be attuned, you know, into energy, that's important. As I said, whether it's the, the feminine and masculine energies, you know, the cre creativity with its productivity, the feeling then that, that expresses as thought and the, you know, the intuition that then expresses in a sense of will, that kind of energy or, you know, energetic work like, um, you know, uh, the, the key, learning how to harness uh, energetics that run through our subtle systems, you know, like, like they show us in, in Qigong and uh, Tai Chi and some of those wonderful uh, precursors to martial arts, understanding how the energy moves through our bodies and moves into our systems. And more and more, of course, energy healing is becoming the most powerful modality. And even if you look at the biochemical Western medical approach, ultimately what it's trying to do is move energy in the physical body. They do it, they wanna do it, you know, in the linear way, get this chemical, ingest it, so you can have physical effect, but ultimately it's only energy because at the atomic and subatomic level, what is that? It's energy, all of it. <laughs> and this hard stuff, it seems hard, but it's not. You know, we know there's more space than, than what? The, there's more space in anything physical than, than anything hard or, or, you know? So... Wonderful. I'm, segue into even life and death. And is there really mm -hmm. life and death or is it all life like never ending? Yeah. I mean, there's life after life, after life, after life, and not just, you know, a cycle of reincarnation, but I believe that when we physically die, we're basically taking off a set of clothing. And are, we're releasing our spirit to the higher realms where we can then choose. We want to come back, be physical, maybe, or we just want to continue and move, you know, to the higher realms. To me, death is an initiation into the next phase of life that is non-physical. You could say ultimately there is no death. But there are transitions throughout life, even within physicality, where certain aspects of us do die off necessarily so that we can grow into the more that we are. So whether I'm talking about transitioning into from an adolescent into an adult where, you know, certain parts of me die, but I still carry the adolescent within me energetically, you know, there's the energy again, it's still inside me. Or whether I'm talking about, I come to the end of my physical life, I lay down my body and I go, you know, up, down, <laughs> wherever, you know, I, I don't mean down in terms of hell. I don't believe in hell. I mean, just, you know, into, I'm, I'm thinking of the Greek uh, idea of the underworld, you know, where souls go and kind of recycle themselves. But wherever you go after uh, um, physical death, you carry the experience with you. So ultimately to me, there is only life. This is terrific, Xavier. It's also the... Why God Matters radio show and podcast on KZSU Stanford 90.1 FM. We're going to uh, acknowledge non-toxic communities. Their mission is uh, founded in 2016. The non-toxic communities seek to assist the growing movement of grassroots groups advocating for local pesticide reform by providing the resources and solutions they need to be successful. For more information, feel free to visit their website at nontoxiccommunities.com. Again, that's nontoxiccommunities.com. We're talking today with Xavier Ikerin Coder. For more information, feel free to visit website xaviersoulstreams.com. Xaviersoulstreams.com. Xavier, if we're going to circle back to drumming and rhythm. Oh, yes. And why that matters to you and how it is linked to why God matters. Oh, well, when I drum, I feel the heartbeat of the great mother in the earth. It absolutely taps me in. You know, rhythm is a universal principle. Principle. You look at it in a microcosmic, it's a frequency that 
electrons and, uh, you know, electrons rotate around the nucleus of the atom. There's a vibrational frequency there, the rate of that and the spin of the atoms. And, you know, you go up to our heartbeat, obviously, and how the blood flows and spirals through our, our uh, bodies. And you go into the planetary rhythms, you know, days, uh, months, years. It's all rhythmic cycles. And you go into the cosmic, you know, the movement of solar systems. And now, uh, you know, uh, beyond that galaxies, they're discovering certain rhythms. And of course, you know, the breath in everything. To me, it really is all about rhythm. We exist within a rhythmic milieu. And it's so important just as it is to be tapped into the energy we spoke about. It's important to be tapped into uh, the beating heart and the breath and the energy that's moving through our earth mother because it grounds us and it keeps us, it, it keeps us real and it keeps us centered. And so drumming, if you look in, in all indigenous societies, it doesn't matter Caucasian, you know, uh, black, whatever, indigenous societies, we all drummed. You know, we all sat around the fire and drummed and sang and danced and moved rhythmically uh, to the sound. And ultimately, to me, everything is about vibration. So when I drum, it's an expression of that vibration. And it, <sighs> It's what I call the cosmic drum. I had an experience, a vision many years ago where I was floating out in the vastness of space. It was dark and deep and wonderful, silent. And I had the experience of this giant hand striking a membrane just out there in the middle of nowhere. Boom. And the ensuing vibrations that rippled out from that initial strike of the cosmic drum by the hand of creator became all that is. That to me is a creation moment. That was my experience of the creation. And that cosmic vibration infuses and gives life to everything that is manifest. Every form, human, animal, plant, vegetable, beyond is given life. By that energy, a vibration is ultimately energy. Same with music. You know, it's, it's all about expressing a certain vibrational frequency. And, you know, your question before about is there a guiding principle or um, something that I live by, there, there's been the prevailing thought for me right now is that we are in a process of ascension as a human race. We are ascending to a higher vibrational frequency. I am, you are, the entire planet is. And the reason why things are so chaotic and why everybody's freaking out is because one of my greatest teachers has termed it a resonance, a resonance shakedown is happening. What that means is when you are moving to a higher vibration, Everything within you that is not able to assume that lighter frequency must be shaken out. And that's what's happening. We look at every sector of our society from politics, healthcare, financial, you name it. It's total chaos. Now, the chaos also is not all negative. Chaos as a... Uh, and energy is not all negative. It's concomitant with creativity. So you have to have some chaos to mix and shake things up in order for something new to emerge. <clears throat> the negativity in chaos happens when you resist it. When you add your energy against the flow and refuse to harness the chaos, that's when it's destructive. And we do that simply because we're not conscious. We're not aware. We just don't know. But when we can get ourselves to align vibrationally with the higher aspect of ourselves, soul, spirit, higher self, divine feminine source, 
sacred masculine force as we align with that and let more and more of the ego go and the part of us that's so frazzled open up to the larger energy and then start to nurture these places within us that are scared you know what lists heal ourselves that way that's when we start to bring those aspects with us because we start to heighten the vibration of our you know individual parts that are getting so shaken up it's like you know tremendous tremendous turbulence right now you know like on an airplane you get that and then you go into you know a stillness that's coming through resonance shakedown and going into the, the calmness of the next phase of creation and that's what we're in we're in a phase of destruction because the universal cycle is creation maintenance and destruction you know the the uh, look at the hindu you know uh, is it the kali yuga I, I don't know the exact exact but there are deities that correspond with that creation maintenance and destruction we are in a phase of destruction the old has to be destroyed in order for the new to then come into being but because we don't know that we freak out but we have to the thing is we have to start being co-creators with the divine we have to participate in the new creation that's our calling as human beings. That's this whole thing about, you know, God creating, well, man, not just man. It's, a, you know, just to use man to delineate men and women is chauvinistic. But God creates humankind, gives them, you know, power and gifts and everything. God wants co-creators to continue the creation. That's what we're here for. So if we don't bring it, guess what? It's not going to happen. It'll all fall. And we are in the process of falling. But the thing is, at any minute, we can sprout those new wings, like a butterfly coming out of the cocoon that used to be a caterpillar, relegated to you know two dimensions of movement along the ground with our domination and hatred and fear. We sprout our wings, go through the metamorphosis and become multi-dimensional multi-dimensional beings who can fly who can use love and compassion goodness beauty truth bring all of that to bear in the creation of our reality that's what i'm going for and that's really the basis of uh, why i do what i do and why I, I keep my heart head mind where i keep it xavier in a segue into um this can this transition can happen in any person's life in a moment similar to where you did the ex, the explosion or the flash it's it's that quickly because we're we're exactly that flash what would you suggest recommend or even um have a curious person consider so that they can experience that understanding through this turbulence Yeah, Tom, wonderful question. You know, a few things around that. I would definitely say stay tapped in and connected to what matters most to you at a deep heart and soul level. You know, what is most important? What matters most? You know, all of the stuff in the media, that's not what matters most. The fear and the, the acrimony, that's not what matters most. What really matters? You know, where, when we, people come to their, their, the time of their death, there are those who approach it with such great regret. Ah, I shoulda, woulda, coulda. Done it differently. I would have spent more time doing this, you know, being with my children, my loved ones, doing what I love, pursuing my art. And then there are those that realize I'm satisfied because that's what I did. Let's do that now. Let's not wait until we're about to die to try and turn around. Go for what really matters. You know, turn off the cell phone and the computer on a regular basis focus inward and then bring that inward focus out toward those you love 
and then to the greater sphere, sphere of your community, to your nation, and to the world, centered from that a place of compassion, you know, tap, tap into that inner grounded place that exists in your soul. And if you don't know it, find it. There's so many great ways of finding it, you know, it doesn't have to be through a spiritual teacher. It can be. It may be through a craft that becomes an impassioned hobby or a simple interest that lights you up. Find what lights you up. Don't relegate it to the sideline or background because somehow you think making money is more important than doing what you love or that it's somehow an indulgence. I mean, what the, I'll keep it G rated because we're on the podcast, but what else are we here for other than to be engaged in what we love and engaged with who we love? And I believe that when we do that, when we prioritize what really matters and what lights up our soul, that sets up, you talk about energy. You've been around people like that. How do they affect you? They quicken your vibration. And if we're all quickening our vibration, that's when the ascension happens. And it's not about any kind of pushing against. This is another corollary I would offer as you're focusing on what matters to you don't get into the oppositional pushing against there was one a quote from abraham that i almost chose you know as to share with you as my mantra i'll share it here abraham says when you're pushing against something you become a vibrational match to it so what is all our pushing against and all of our fighting amount to it's vibration, vibrationally matching us to the stuff we say we don't want. And it's actually manifesting more of it and keeping us in the mire, in the morass of it. And you know what? You can just, <laughs> just wipe ascension, the idea of ascension off the board. If that's where we're going to stay. Outstanding. The Why God Matters radio show and podcast is recorded at KZSU Stanford University Studios and on location. The recording engineer and production manager is Eris Chikopoulos, chief engineer Mark Lawrence, and we are all assisted by the Office of Religious and Spiritual Life at Stanford University. And the executive producer and the host of Why God Matters is Tom Dioro. If you wish to contact us, our email address is interviews at kzsu.stanford.edu. Again, that's interviews at kzsu.stanford.edu.